Earlier this month, I spent about a week in British Columbia producing a short film. On my way home, I stopped in Minnesota to visit my friends and colleagues at Park Tool Company. I use the word colleagues because Calvin, Truman, and Scott run Park Tool's YouTube channel, making them fellow creators. While there, we did a sit-down interview. You can totally see how this all works. A video where I tried to guess the purpose of several vintage bike tools. And a video where Calvin graded my performance on diagnosing problems with mountain bikes. I think that the casing is not 100% on this tire because... 100% agree. You can see all this on Park's channel. Back at headquarters, I had some plans of my own. Scenes like this do very little to justify the existence of Park's YouTube department. And in front of a hard-working assembly line on a Thursday, I felt just a little guilty having that much fun. But Calvin, Truman, and Scott are working on the biggest catalog of bike repair tutorials on the planet. And that's no exaggeration. We'll come in and give that L-screw a little bit of a turn. Then we're going to check the shift again. Did we go too tight? Nope, it still shifts nicely. As a tool company, these videos strengthen Park's status as an authority. They also provide screen time for Park's many products. In exchange, viewers get valuable information and entertainment, even if it can be a little cheesy at times. Because the seals are the heart of a hydraulic disc brake. There's a relationship between your shoulders, your arm length, and your bars. And yours are just too wide. We need to cut those down. These videos are so widely viewed that I got text messages from two separate bike mechanics who saw that I had met Calvin and Truman. In visiting the biggest and oldest bike tool company in the world, I hope to see lots of weird nerdy stuff. And that's what the rest of this video is about. We'll start with Park Tools' pimped out event trailer, which they take to trade shows and races. All the tools on the wall are bolted down for display purposes, but there's a duplicate of every one in the drawers. This allows Park to securely show off their products, while still using this as a functional shop. Do these tend to stay closed when you're driving the trailer? Oh, yeah, this is designed uh, out of Milwaukee, and it uh, oh. latches. It's used in a lot of uh, automotive racing for their, right. their, their work trucks. As you can see, the rear and side of this trailer open for additional floor space. Let's take a look at something a little less modern. This is the original one. There was, there was really no derailers and no caliper brakes. They just turned everything upside down to work on it. It's an old kitchen table, legs. This was a, either a printer roller or a shell casing. That old thing gave way to the first commercially available bike repair stand, built by Hazel Park Cycle. Eric was happy to show me how repair stands have changed. All I gotta do is hit the button and it goes up, and it goes up to seven feet, and it goes all the way down to the ground. This electric work stand seems like a great way to get shops to spend more money, but actually, it was a response to lifting restrictions in parts of Europe. If you bring your car in and they put it on the lift, they don't do the brakes down here. They put the, they put the brakes right here. Even a carbon fiber road bike, yeah, you can pick it up. But to see the bottom bracket, to see the saddle, that's the point. Eric showed me where the engineers work and where products like that electric stand are manufactured. He also showed me Park's enormous Schwinn collection. But during my tour of Park Tool, my eyes were peeled for anything weird and nerdy. And it wasn't long before I had found the Holy Grail. Okay. Well, let me see. Let me. It's about right there, so you're at height, and then you got room to go out in the... That's true, if we do it outside. I've dabbled in unicycling, but never on something quite this big. Let me get situated. Lean forward, and go. <laughs> Attempting to tackle the giraffe was pretty freaking scary. Yes. Okay. I got this. Let's go right in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>! <laughs> it's so hard. 
I asked Scott, Park's videographer, if he had ever ridden a unicycle. And he said, yeah, I used to race them. After that, there was no way we were going to let him walk away from the giraffe. All right, let's do this. <laughs> Come on, baby. There we go. You're doing it. There we go. <laughs> Scott's doing it, and the seat's super low. No worries. <laughs> Come on now. Let's get racing on this thing. Dude! I was gonna do some bunny hops, but I don't know. You gotta hop that block. Oh no. Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> I already felt a little. Oh bit. man, no, that was good. That was. Good time. I think we're all satisfied with that. I'd love to try a unicycle that tall again someday. But at that moment, I wondered who would own a unicycle that tall anyway. I gotta practice for a few minutes first. We don't want you injured. It took a little goading, but Eric finally agreed to come out of retirement and give her a go. Can you make it around the pole? Not bad. All that excitement got us all pretty hungry, so it was time for a lunch break. past, Park Tool has made quite a few lunch-related items, including a pizza cutter, a spork, and various bottle openers. But before my visit, they had begun development on a new tool to assist bike mechanics during lunch. To get a working prototype made before my arrival took a lot of R&D and a lot of coffee. But Park Tool delivered, introducing the TH1 Workbench Taco Holder, which fits in a standard pegboard or a Park brand repair stand. Like any well-engineered tool, Park designed the TH1 to work with multiple standards, both hard and soft. This, of course, meant specking it to shells, because, as everyone knows, flour tortillas will fit into anything U-shaped. Bigoted taco elitists may scoff at hard shells, but we're talking about carbohydrates with cheese here, folks. A hungry bike mechanic just wants their taco to stay in place, and the TH1 gets the job done right. During my visit to Park Tool, we attempted to ride some trails in the Twin Cities, but got rained out. Luckily, that didn't affect our weekend plans in Duluth, where, as I mentioned, we did a video diagnosing bikes at Spirit Mountain. After that, I stuck around Duluth for a day to check out the riding there. To say the very least, I was surprised. More on that next time. Whether or not you use Park's tools personally, they're usually first to market with all the things shops need to perform their repairs. Park's videos are free for anyone to benefit from, so watch their channel if you're interested in working on your own bike, and for their upcoming collaboration videos with me. Thank you Park Tool for having me, and thanks for riding with me today. I'll see you next time. See you, Seth! Side by Seth, bye! Shut the gate! Take! On the other ones. Oh, there we go. Do it again. That one. There we go.